Hello, bug dads. Happy, slightly late Father's Day. And welcome back to another video by me, Nancy from Cybugs. And today we are going to be talking all about male exclusive parental care in insects and some of the best bug dads and other arthropod dads that are out there. So buckle up because first we're going to talk about the evolution of parental care and especially that of male exclusive care and then we're going to be getting into five different arthropods that have male exclusive parental care. Okay so this is future editing Nancy <laughs> and basically when I was making this video my idea was to have like an introduction, a short introduction about parental parental care and how that evolved and some info about that before we got into the bug dads so that way you know you'd have some context um, but as it turns out I had a lot to say about it so if I put that part of the video and the five bug dads together into one video it will literally be like 40 minutes long so we are not going to do that we are going to split it into part one and part two so part one is all about parental care continue and I will see you for part two next week. So I hope you guys are excited. Also, because I think they're funny, I, we will be sprinkling in some dad jokes and some puns that have been provided by my Twitter community and on Instagram. So if you are interested in ever having something funny or pizzazz-like added into these videos by you lovely bugs, then be sure to follow me on the social media so that way when I post asking for things and you can send them to me and be featured in a video. Without further ado, let's get started in talking about parental care and its evolution. But first, let's start off with some puns. Oh man, I'm so excited. The first one is by Mark and it is a termite walks into a tavern and asks, is the bartender here? And AI Dunn says a grasshopper walks into a bar. The bartender says, hey, we have a drink named after you. The grasshopper replies, you have a drink named Steve? So we're going to talk about male exclusive care in this video. Male exclusive care is when it's just the dad being a great bug dad, taking care of the young and making sure they grow up to be outstanding bug citizens in the bug world. This means that the mom isn't doing any work and the both parents together are not doing any work. It's just the dad. Think of a seahorse. I went through a lot of scientific papers and I went through read a lot of articles trying to tease out how this could have possibly evolved because I thought it would be a good intro. And I came across this gem. I'm going to read it for you. Ready? Exclusive male parental investment is an extremely rare behavior among animals. An evolution of the trait is obscure. That's always a really good sign when you're doing research. You're like, I'm interested in this thing. And then it's like, hmm, yes, the thing is difficult. So the thing is difficult, but we're gonna go through a little bit what we do know and talk about some of the factors of what makes male exclusive care and even parental care a little bit complicated. Basically, paternal care comes down to a cost benefit equation. And there's a couple ways you can have a type of parental care, et cetera, without having one of the parents actually sit around and hang out with the offspring. But basically, it's a cost benefit. You as a reproductive adult want your eggs and or your sperm to create a fertile offspring that are then going to grow up and then mate and pass your genes down. That is the ultimate goal. And there's a couple different strategies and I'm going to boil this down into two main strategies just to make it simple. but. Understand that evolution is complicated, so there's a lot of factors, but we're just gonna simplify it down a little bit today, okay? But basically, you can either put more investment in each offspring, or you can just lay more offspring. You just produce more offspring. So think about this, for example, you know, you could have an insect that has really, really small eggs, not a lot of nutrition in them, and just lays a but ton of them literally everywhere. This is a lot of insects. A lot of insects do this strategy. If there's 20,000 eggs, 
two of them probably aren't gonna die. And that is a legitimate strategy. So one of the strategies, again, is just to lay a ton of eggs and hope for the best for a couple of them. The other strategy is to invest in your offspring in a particular way. This can be laying eggs that are bigger, so you lay bigger eggs, but fewer of them. And so those bigger eggs have more nutrients. So your babies come out and they're all like well-fed and ready to fight the competition. Or you can put them in a burrow so they're less likely to dry out and they're less likely to have predators find them. You can lay your eggs in a food source for them, for example, or you can have extreme parental care, which we'll talk about in a second. But those are basically your options and your strategies. So parental care arises from more of the second strategy. You are putting more of your energy and more of your effort into taking care of your young. I mean, like think about humans, right? Like you're 18 years old and your parents still help you out, right? So <laughs> there's a lot of cost on the parents when they do parental care, but the idea is that their offspring are more likely and almost guaranteed to survive to adulthood to survive to the reproductive age. Okay, that was a lot. So we're gonna have a dad joke just sprinkled right in here. This one is from Cherry Mischief and she says, dad used to work in a calendar factory. He got fired when he took the whole year off. All right, moving on. We usually think about paternal care happening w mainly with the mothers. So the mothers will hang out with the offspring and the dads get to do basically whatever they want and mate with a whole lot of other females of their species. So basically because the female is usually putting in more nutrients and more energy to the eggs, it's in her best interest to make sure those offspring survive. So if the male is just producing sperm, then there's not a lot of incentive because he can like mate with anyone and just like go off wherever and it doesn't matter. And so the female, because she's putting a lot more energy into the production of eggs, using a lot more resources, using a lot more nutrients, using a lot more fats, all that stuff, she is more likely to be invested in what is happening with her offspring. And therefore, that's why we see a lot of maternal care. We do see paternal care evolve because a female can mate with multiple males. And in the case with insects, a female can actually choose whose sperm she uses to fertilize her eggs. So if like male one like comes over and he mates with her and she's like, this sperm sucks. She will literally just absorb it and use it as nutrients. She can also store multiple males sperm in an organ called a spermatheca and she can choose whose sperm fertilizes the eggs. So from the male perspective, there is a lot of mate guarding that happens where males will hang around the females, literally drag her around, literally sit on top of her. Article I wrote about that in the, in the reference section below where the male will literally just like grab onto her to ensure that his sperm is the one that's being used to fertilize her eggs. So we can start seeing extreme versions of this where the male would want the female to pick him and show himself as being a good candidate. And by good, I mean be stronger, more fit, provide more nutrients, have better genetics, et cetera, et cetera. And there are ways that males can have signals so that the females choose him. This happens with like lizards that beat each other up and birds that have really crazy mating displays. And it can happen in insects as well. So colors, for example, territorial butterflies, but it can also show up in this form of paternal care. If the male is providing a giant nutrient pack to the female, as in the case with Katie did, which we'll talk about in just a second, the female knows that he is good at gaining nutrients and that he has enough to give to her to lay her eggs. So that would be a good signal. There's other males that collect different types of chemicals that the female will use to pass 
Those chemicals down to her eggs or her eggs are chemically defended. This shows that the males are strong enough to compete with other males to get these different chemicals. And if a male is guarding eggs, even if they aren't her eggs, she can still mate with him because he can mate with a lot of different females and him guarding the nest or guarding eggs is what we call an honest signal that his genes are good, he's strong, he's competent, and that his genes are worth investing her energy of the eggs into. The state of paternal care doesn't come from a state of maternal care. It actually evolves on its own from a system where there is no paternal care and it arises independently. Of course, like I mentioned in right at the beginning of this video, it's complicated and obscure. There's a lot of other things that come into play, including life history, competition of resources, competition against other males, competition against other species, niche participation. It's just like everything is just this like big cloud of variables. So which ones are exactly impacting this line of evolution to have parental care or even male exclusive care arise is complicated and messy. Basically, we see the result. We see why it happened. We can say like, oh yes, like these are honest male signals. So the female knows that her eggs are in good hands or the male and the female both benefit because their offspring is going to grow up to be big and strong and healthy and good citizens. And so we can backtrack and make these reasons, but seeing the actual mechanisms underlying and pushing these to happen is a little bit muddy still. So we be working on it. Exclusive male parental care in arthropods is extremely rare. We only see it in about 13 taxa and out of 1 million plus insects alone to only see male parental care show up in about 13 small taxa is really indicative of how seldomly and how kind of rare this evolutionary process is, which is why it's probably so obscure and why we don't know much about the mechanisms to make it happen. Okay, bugs, I am super curious to know which one of these examples was your favorite. So be sure to leave that below in the thought box. And of course, if you have another example of one that I didn't cover, because like I was saying, there's like 13 of them, but I mean, who has time to like cover all 13 in a video? But if you have one that you think was particularly interesting, that you are sad that I did not cover, you should also leave that in the thought box because maybe we'll do a second video about awesome bug dads. If you liked this video, be sure to actually like it. Helps me, helps you, helps literally everybody. And also subscribe with the bell notification on because that way you'll know when I upload. Again, convenient for the both of us. I don't want to make content if you can't see it and you will be sad if you can't see the content that you want. So the bell notification. And then finally, over here, you can see another video in this playlist. And then down here, you can see a video of mine that is recommended to you by the YouTube algorithm. So I will see you all next week, bugs. And I'm so excited to be doing YouTube again with you guys. And I can't wait to hear from you all very soon and read all of your comments. All right, bye. See you next week.